Dive into the song. Praise the Lord. Shall welcome my son. Come on, I said, Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's remain standing without wasting much time. We want to. Bible says, Honor to whom honor is due. Before you see the way, somebody saw it first. Before you get your breakthrough, somebody conceived it. And somebody bet that breakthrough. Every vision without someone who pets it never becomes a vision. 
The reason why we are here is simply because our parents received a vision and they decided to obey. And our mom, who happens to receive this heavenly vision, and our father says, I will support you to do what God wants you to do. And she has paid the price. She has fought the beast of the nation, the powers that be in the gate of this nation. And she has prevailed. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. I said she has prevailed. Now, if she did not prevail, we won't call the branches we call. Branches doesn't just emerge because somebody wanted branches. It simply means somebody received an heavenly vision and died. And the vision came alive. And it's a great privilege for the Queen of Jesus. Woo. The woman of prayer. Woo. The woman of no nonsense. If you don't know that she is a no nonsense, try and you will find out. By the time you are finding out, you are straight like pencil. Amen. You may not believe it. If my mother calls and I don't pick up the call I answer questions and I may be on video to go down the whole house to see if there is any unwanted guests so she is a no nonsense but she is the most loving person on the planet Earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I look at a bowel of love and I look at her and say, Jesus, I know I'm not there. But she is a woman of a great deep heart. And she will say, When I go home to be with the Lord, I want churches everywhere. Amen. If it is church, you've made her day. If it is not church, she is not involved. And I tell you something, it's a great honor. And I want us to celebrate the grace of God. Upon her royal grace, the wife to our father. I can hear you, sir. I can hear you. But I think the time is really gone. 
And so, um, I will still hear from you, maybe upstairs. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord has a word in everyone's heart. And when we go up, I will hear. And then we will record it so we can play them for the church. It is love that has brought you here. Amen. Because it's really a far journey. And it's expensive to really come all this way. And for our church in Italy, it's love that has brought you. If I where we are located, if you don't have love, you can't serve here. Mm -hmm. So may this love that you have sown as seed return back to you. Amen. May love overflow around you. Amen. If anyone in your congregation even does not like you, I prophesy as you return, love will replace us. Yeah. And to those who sow the seed, you have connected to this ground. Amen. You cannot go back as a pastor Amen. without having your own. Amen. I speak into your life Amen. and I say to you, fear not. And to those who are thinking of how do I make branches or how do I make congregation, he that sits upon the heavens knows what your heart desires. I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you. Apostle Rosalyn, I prophesy to you. Come and see is already in Nigeria before you are arriving. I have seen it in the spirit. Hallelujah. And I prophesy to all of you that as your hands are up, may God identify today and bless you. And everyone say, I receive it. I want to specially thank God for my own husband, the only man that can stand with me. Can you please help me? I'm a daddy in the house. like this for my husband, your daddy. Amen. Please stretch up and say, Daddy, we love you. And I would have said our children, but in KGMI, we don't have biological children and spiritual children. In fact, the spiritual children all owe the name Ajati. So, thank you, children. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bibles very quickly and stand for the word of God a little moment. Some of us, this might have been the only exercise we'll do for today. Stand up and take your Bible. If you have any reason why you cannot stand for the word of God and give the word of God a standing ovation, you may put your hands up so an usher can hold you whilst you respect the word of the Lord. We want to thank the wonderful masters of ceremony, Pastor Ehiz, as an, our elected reverend. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then we want to thank God for our Bishop of America, Apostle Samuel. Yeah. And then take your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. Are you there? Let's find ourselves in Nehemiah chapter 4. And whilst you are opening, say, Father, speak to me. Say that like you mean it. Say it all over again. Nehemiah chapter 4. Are we all there? Okay, we shall all read. And if you don't know how to read, be moving your lips whilst we are reading for you. Amen? Yes. And then we will take it quickly from verse... 10, from verse 10. I will call the verse and then you read it. I think that will really help us. So let's go verse 4. Everyone Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 4. When I call the verse you jump and read it. All of us are reading together. This is the living word of the Most High God. He is the spirit of the Lord. It is not just a writing. This is not a novel. This is a word when you read it will come back to you a living thing. So read it with right attitude and with joy. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 4. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. 
activity. activity. Have you experienced anything like to be despised or mocked? Mm -hmm. I want you to mark the spot for prayer. It is okay to make your own prayer, but it's so effective to read the prayer somebody wrote and had a, a breakthrough. And so as you say this day, Lord, turn my despise away and hear me. Do not let me be reproached. That is, don't let anything embarrass me. And if you pray that prayer, I decree as God did for Nehemiah, he would do for you. Amen. I want your amen to be very strong. Amen. Now, that's verse 4. Sorry, the verse 5 is a prayer of revenge. And I do not think I want to pray that prayer for anybody now. So let's go to 6. Go, everyone. Nehemiah was appointed by Jehovah to build the walls of Jeru Jerusalem. And he noticed a particular gift that the people had the mind to build. I prophesy to you. That the people that have to stand with you to build your home, build your family, build your business, they will have the mind to build it. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. I receive it. Now, anytime you are progressing in destiny, there is always a team of people that get frustrated of your progress. But I also see that Nehemiah made a certain prayer about that. Let's read verse 8 and 9. Every one of us. I want to give everybody 60 seconds right now to make a prayer to God right now. Make a prayer and say to the Lord, Lord, help me so that those who conspire against me and speak against me will be freed whilst I progress to accomplish your mission. Come on. It may be a family member. It may be a friend. It may be a colleague. Pray 60 seconds. Rashe ke la matataya. Roshi kambara basata be. Ratiki mayanda. Let the prayer of my people be heard by you, Father, for we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. There is a situation that everyone will be experiencing in life. It's an amazing situation. And you can find it in verse 10 and 11. Let us read that very quickly. God is speaking through this book. There is no prophecy like the prophecy of the word of God. Amen. The prophecy that is coming from the word of God is Amen. already proven. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's authentic. Amen. The signature of God is upon these verses. Amen. And so when you use them, it will work for you. Amen. It is more effective than medication. Amen. And I want you to read verse 10 and 11. Everyone go. Is your strength decaying? Do you feel discouraged? Do you wake up in the morning and you feel discouraged? I want you to know it's not a new thing. It is not a new thing for you as a pastor, for you as a congregation member to stand up and feel discouraged about life. For this is life. If you wake up and every day you are happy and it's always happiness, then that's not love. Life anyway. True life has days that are so gloomy, days that are bright. Because on earth we have night and we have day. 
and then alongside whilst you are down and very tired and decaying you will have an adversary who will be thinking and imagining that you cannot make it i tell you from your very mother's house or your father's house there will always be someone that does not wish you well it's not a breaking news that is life but if you are a candidate of this verse you have read i just want you to know that you are coming out with a testimony Amen. that will blow the mind Amen. of your enemies Amen. if you agree with me shout three hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. there will be people who act like they are with you and yet they will also be with your enemy verse 12 is talking about aloofers they are here and they are there so as a matter of fact these people go to hear what they say and they come to tell you they say and they say and they say there will always be people who want to use both sides for their own benefit so the bible says that they were jews who came 10 times to report to the builders of the wall that there is a bad plan against them they were not coming to say let's pray they were only giving a report if you have a reporter as a friend mark that friend that friend should not be with you and you are going to pray right now and say father Give me opportunity to receive good news from my telephone. I do not want a friend who is a reporter. You want to pray that right now. One minute. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The people were building wall. And for ten times they came to tell them what the enemy have planned. Now, the word 10 times in this Bible is not like they are counting 10 times. The number 10 means that the situation has become as you are thinking. But what you are thinking is not what God is thinking. So they came 10 times means they kept on talking till the vision of the people that they were carrying became like it can never be. I do not know who is talking in your life. Keep saying to you, you can't make it. Or keep saying, life will be a challenge. Keep saying, and sometimes it's the devil himself who will speak to you every morning. If you are in this condition, listen, the Bible said, Nehemiah told the people, strengthen yourself. If we have to do war, we will do war and build. And therefore he told them, hold one hand with a sword. Hold another hand with a spear. Hold your bow and arrow, but keep working. Tell three people, keep doing something for God. Now, Nehemiah will now talk to the seniors. Nehemiah will take time to talk to the seniors. And so in verse 14, he is advising them and giving them courage. So I want you to read verse 14 as the voice of the Holy Spirit to you. You cannot live yet the same. Amen. I'm talking on the subject, Amen. take back your strength. Amen. Take back your strength. Amen. I'm prophesying to somebody, take back your strength. Amen. I don't know who has pronounced things and have made your atmosphere so gloomy. I say, take back your strength. So here we are, verse 14. Can you read it? Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, for your sons and for your daughters, your wives and your nobles. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to know that we returned all of us 
to the world, everyone, and to his. Now jump to 17, everybody. Hallelujah. They which build on the wall, and they that bear bedding, with those that ladded, every one with one of his hand wrought in his work, and one of his hand weapon. Get this picture. Your one hand will be fighting, and your one hand will be building. Now I have to announce to every child of God here, if you don't learn how to be strong, you cannot be a child of God. Amen. Your one hand will always be fighting. And your one hand will be what? Building. Amen. Now, can you touch somebody and say, never you get tired. Verse 21 to the end. All of us. So... We live it. Somebody should read with their microphone. 21 to 23, all of us go. So we live in the world. And our day is the best. For the right of the world is the best. For the right of the world is the best. For the right of the world is the best. So that I, the body, nor myself, but, nor the men of the God which followed me, nor of the spirit of my flesh, saving that everyone put them off for worship. They could not take off their working clothes, except that they will remove it to wash. Father, speak to us. Amen. We love you. Amen. Strengthen everyone. Amen. They will not sit back in their flights going back sad. No, no weak. But they are going to confront every giant. And they will bring it down. Amen. And therefore, Lord, I receive grace for my weakness. And give me strength and wisdom for my foolishness. That I may serve your people. And their lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you sit down, greet three people and say, take back your strength. Now I want the ushers, I want the ushers to position themselves so that nobody will move. Please be seated. I want the ushers to position themselves. Please, you cannot stand up to no word. God is about to speak to you and you cannot stand up to no word. Where are the ushers? Position yourself and make sure nobody leaves till i'm done the devil is fun of making you stand up to think something is more important there is nothing important than hearing the word of god and so tell somebody seated by you you are not standing up till mama is done i'm watching you i'm watching you praise the lord there is a vivid story that you must hear Life is made out of stories, and stories make history. And so it's important for you to study the stories of the Bible, and then the history of it makes who you are. Everybody is in this Bible. Why am I saying that? There is something in the Bible that relates to you. Your story is in this Bible. Everything is in this Bible. Just in case you took somebody's wife and, and killed the husband, you are right here. Just in case you've been a lousy father, you don't discipline your children, you are right here. Everything is in this Bible. Did you lie to get your document? You are right here. Don't tell me about airport age. You know, when you are sick and you go to the hospital or something, go back. Only God can help you because some of you, the 61 is 16. You twist the number. I say you are right in the Bible. Tell somebody and say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Everything is in this Bible. And so it is important for the child of God never 
to lose the Bible. So here we are going to listen to an account that looks like me. Say this this verse looks like me. Say it to yourself. The Bible tells us a time came when a young man who serves in the king's palace, that is King Atazazus, king of Persia, was seven. His face was looking sad. And uh, because he's always a happy person, when something that didn't go right, everybody could notice it. There are people, you don't know when they are happy, you don't know when they are sad. But in the case of Nehemiah, Nehemiah has been a very good steward. And he's always a happy person. He greets the king. Good morning, king. Live forever. His greetings have been constantly nice. There is no blessing like having a child who wakes up to greet you with joy. May it be your portion. Amen. So that the king took courage in the greetings. I pray that the pastors who have people in their churches that greet them for joy. Amen. You must have people around you that strengthen you. So Nehemiah was such a person. But the Bible said one morning his heart was so heavy because he started thinking about his country. He saw the success of other nations and their country was bent down. Bent down to ashes and he was sad so the king noticed it. The king quickly appointed him to follow after Ezra. Ezra went to Jerusalem to build the foundation of Jerusalem, the foundation of the temple. And soon after that, Nehemiah followed to do the walls. Because sometimes you really want protection around you. Yeah. He thought about that protection. So Nehemiah was made a governor of Judah. And he served within 12 years. And within that 12 years, he had to accomplish a purpose. And I pray that the space of time that Jehovah will give you, you will be able to accomplish your purpose on earth. Amen. The story of Nehemiah is very interesting. The Bible says he now got to Judah. When he got there, the place was in shambles. You cannot hold anything together. And by faith, he started building the wall with his people. But unfortunately, the very people he will build the wall with were even more discouraged. What will you do when you have church members that are not happy with themselves? That should not make you resign. We have pastors that are resigning today. We have ordination in some few minutes. We have people that look at the work of God and they say they cannot do. But listen, something about Nehemiah was special. Nehemiah with Ezra, the Bible didn't say they had a crown to wear. They did not contest for position of sitting on the throne. They did not lead an army to war. They did not even become popular. They were not looking for fame. They were only simply wanting to put Judah together. May you be that person. Amen. Positionings in life are not important as agenda of God. People love to have titles. Because they think that when they have the titles, it makes them bigger. But life is not about titles. It's about what did God ask you to do on earth. This is a serious question. Every Christian must understand that you didn't appear from the moon. God took his time to make you. You were not created like animals. You were made with the finger of God. And if God took his time to make you, which means that he has a plan for you. May you discover your plan. And this, this is a very short information I'm giving you. I will not be here for long. Now the Bible said natural things started happening to Nehemiah. After he took the appointment to do what God wanted from him. What is the natural thing? Number one. He started receiving reports that would discourage him. Number two, the people he was working with became weary. And the Bible described that they decayed. It's like they, they just couldn't put themselves together. Number three, the food supply 
in the country was not enough to serve the people. So Nehemiah, as a, as a governor, decided to give his food to the poor. We are talking about a country that has been left for 50 years. If you read the Bible, it has a metaphor that says that God will punish Israel to go to Babylon and after 70 years they will return. But as a matter of fact, they return 50 years after. The word 70 is a quote to say God must completely finish correcting you. So in the 50th year, they started going back. And only few decided to go back because at that time, Babylon was established. It was a popular city and the people had good positions. And they could not say, we would drop this good thing and go to a land that had been left in Shambhal. King Nebuchadnezzar bent down the temple and bent the whole city. All trees were cut down. Look at the picture of going back home and you do not find one stone on a stone. No brick on a brick. Everything is in a mess and God asks you, build it. We have come to a place where Christians wake up and they look for greener pastures, forgetting that they are the greener pastures. And wherever they stand, the place must be blessed and it must prosper. It has become an easy, easy looking life that people are looking for. How will God send you to go to a place that doesn't even have water? Think about this. Why and how? And at that time, history says that Roman Empire, Greece Empire, were rising and was getting stronger. And then a place like Judah doesn't even have any king anymore. The king has been carried into exile. Everybody carried away. Only few people were on the ground. And now, actually, those who were on ground were sick people that Nebuchadnezzar would not need. People that had leprosy, sickness uncurable. And you mean God will ask a person, go there and build me a house. You may be wondering that, is there a physical place I'm talking about? No. Your own life is a place that when you look at it, you want to return to Canaan. They left Babylon to go back to Canaan. And they got to Canaan and they felt disappointed. They had received all prophecies. And the prophecies say, my children, my children, I am going to do a great thing for you. The latter rain and the former rain are all coming. Go to Judah and I will build I will rebuild my temple. This type of prophecies are exciting. And with that joy, they packed their load. And they got to the place. Looking for water to drink was a big deal. Did God lie to them? No. Was God just playing with their mind? No. They got to the place, the Bible said, even those that were on ground came to report to Nehemiah, how much they were abused. And when you are working with people who's, who have been abused, their mind is somehow. And God says, Nehemiah, I trust you to put the place together. What is your assignment like? And I cannot lead the women because the women are too much. And I cannot lead the men they are so difficult. You were thinking that God will call you and give you a work so easy. Our Father trusts you to give you what is very challenging. If you are here with me this afternoon. And you want to see the goodness of God. The first thing you should understand from today. That there is nothing like sweet Honey, living life for a child of God. One hand fights and the other hand builds. This is not a popular gospel.
gospel, but this is the true gospel. Amen. If you have heard any other gospel, please drop it. Come, let's reason together. There is no work God gives you that is easy. Because easy things are given to weak people. But because it is written, let the weak say, I am strong. Father, trust you to take up that appointment. Amen. God is calling you now. Amen. God is calling you now. Amen. I've seen many people tell me, oh, mommy, in fact, with this man, if I ever knew that this is how he is, I will not marry. I will not marry him. Let me tell you, God created marriage, not just for the sweetness of it, but for you to be able to expose your own bad character. That is why God gave you somebody to take care of. And so do the honeymoon quick. Mm? And take all the pictures. Let your wedding gown belong from here to the street. And when you finish, the next day come, let's work. You are going to see the true person you have married. The true woman you have married. I don't want to talk about the lashes. The lashes will be removed. The wig will be no more. And the bobby stand will be no more. Then you will know who you marry. Slap somebody's shoulder and say, this is life. Oh God. I just thank you. I thank you for bringing me to this church. In fact, if I had not come to this church, I wouldn't have seen the glory of God. Oh yeah? Give that person three years. In that church, somebody will join and make you feel like you should run for your life. Hey, tell somebody you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. This is life. This is life. This is life. Nehemiah, I want you to build what Satan has spoiled. Nehemiah, you to be strong. There is nothing like I'm fainting. Nehemiah, I need you to do five things for me. And the Bible said, one, Nehemiah had to put the people together and cause them to read the law. They did not want to read the Bible again. They could not understand why God says he will prosper them and yet they cannot find the prosperity. God did not lie. He told us, I will give you houses plus persecution. Stop removing things from the Bible. In the Bible, he said, they will slap you. And when they slap, turn the other one and take the second slap. It is written. So don't come to me and say, can you believe he slapped me? <laughs> The Bible has said, when they take your cloth, add your coats. We have come to a generation who can't stand anything like difficulties. It's a, gener a generation that thinks that as fast as their telephone work, that is how fast God should work for them. Take it a moment. Your telephone is a telephone you touch and it just works for you. But God is not the type you can even touch. Fire will consume you. You have to learn how to wait on God. You have to learn how to pray. So now Nehemiah taught them how to read the word. And whilst they were reading it, they kept saying to themselves, The Lord said he will rebuild. The Lord said he will prosper us. The Lord said this, but we are not seeing it. Nehemiah said we have seen it. Once we start, we will end well. I prophesy in your life. Amen. I prophesy in your life. Amen. There is nothing you are seeing which is negative that will remain in your life. Amen. If the Bible is stating that Nehemiah finished building the world, you will finish what God has asked you to do. Amen. If life was all about roses, the roses would die. But the, but the stem and, 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 and the tones about it keeps the rose coming again. Hallelujah. If you don't have the tone, the rose cannot come. Do you understand? Yes. God is speaking through creation. Amen. The rose season goes. And if you see the tree, you only see tones. 
And so this time, if your life looked like thorns, I'm telling you the spring will come and the roses will come again. Amen. I want a better image. Yeah. I want you to receive this prophecy. Yeah. Every condition in your life is about to turn around. Yeah. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Truly, I have come to understand that there are no places like greener pastures. Note it. You left Africa and you came to Europe. And when you were coming, you were sure that it would be very interesting. When you arrived, did you see that there was work for you to do? Anywhere you move to, there is work. It's life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep moving and changing location. You need to understand that one hand will walk Amen. and one hand will be will build are you understanding me so let the weak say i am strong nehemiah also after helping them to read the word he helped them to fast and pray we've come to a place that people fast from morning to just nine o'clock jesus himself told us there are some principalities without fasting they don't go Please touch somebody and say, can you please fast? Now, do not tell me you are on medication. Hold on the medication for one day and fast for one day. You can do it. With God, all things are possible. The Bible said, then now Nehemiah taught them also how to make covenants with God. Because they had forgotten about God. Life can make you forget the vows you make can turn around and you will not remember you made a vow before you traveled. May my God, who is your God, strengthen you as Nehemiah. Amen. I have come to tell you something. From the year 2020, which started some few days ago because we are using the calendar of Israel. The world is about to place demands on us. But we, the sons of God that know our God, will do exploits. Amen. When people cry for trouble, we will stand there and have victory. Amen. When people run and cannot stand, you will remain there and God will show up. Amen. The Bible said Jacob got to a place and he realized that it is not change of location, but it's change of thinking. He said to God, change my mentality. And your mentality is your name. How you think will determine how far you can go. I don't want you to think from today that the people you have in your church are too difficult. Pastors, be strengthened. Don't look at your congregation member and name them with a wrong name. Don't say things like, this country is very difficult. Don't use your mouth to say that. Speak what God says. Nehemiah, say to the ground of Judah, you shall be built again. Amen. Nehemiah, say to this place that has no building, building will appear. Amen. And the Bible said, Nehemiah experienced five things. One, mocking. People laugh at him. People mock at him and they despise him. You know, if they mock you, it's not even enough. But when they despise you, they say you amount to nothing. Do not look at what they say and what they are doing. Trust God. You are on God's mind. You are on God's agenda. Your assignment is very challenging. I accept that. It is challenging because God knows you can do it. It is challenging because our God is not a weak God. He likes to fight. His name is a man of war. And so your life may have challenges. I conclude by saying from today, every child of God here under the sound of my voice will understand that to be born again simply means the world will 
hate you. It is good for you to wake up and understand that even those who smile with you hate you. I think you are safer that way. But you, if you think the whole world, everybody loves you. And so when somebody do something you don't like, you sit down and cry. I have handkerchief to share for children of God today. Take it and do your last cry tonight. You are not, you are not supposed to be a spoiled child. You are not supposed to take offenses. You are not supposed to change your mind on your God. There is nothing like fast life. There is one thing I know. Waiting on God brings results. Amen. Lift up your right hand. And say to yourself, I am Nehemiah. I, am Nehemiah. I, see, some I see some things wrong. In my family. In my, family. In my, church. In my church. At my workplace. At my workplace. But because I am Nehemiah. I will stand. Till the change comes. Amen. Amen. I'm not getting a good hallelujah over here. Hallelujah. Because, because I did not stand here to say, put 1,000 down and you will make, you will, you have prosperity. I don't know whatever they say. No, 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 no. Hey, Karashi Makasai. Let the child of God hear me. If you are working in a place, there is somebody there that is always provoking you and you are a child of God you are not supposed to slam the door eh? frown your face walk with an attitude and even stop the job to look for another one you are to face the enemy eyeball to eyeball and say I don't even know what you are doing good morning the child of God is not supposed to quit a difficult time the child Till he wins. Put your hand on your chest and say, Lord, give me right attitude. People pack out of marriage only to know that the next person they are marrying is worse than the first. It's, it, it's not about the one you are marrying, it's about an agenda of God for you to fulfill. If you want everything roses, it is not the world. You may go to heaven now. But if you intend to stay in this world, your father didn't deceive you. We have preached wrong gospel by telling you that once you come to Jesus, everything will be fine. No, it will be fine after you fight. It will be fine after you wait. It will be fine after you endure. It will be fine after you are patient. It will be fine after you stand. Child of God, to a Nehemiah here now. Don't you ever open your mouth again and say, I regretted this and I regretted that and I regretted that. If Father will send the Son to come and die for you, then you should know what Father can ask you to do. Are you going to stay with Jesus? Are you going to heaven with Jesus? He made sure the disciples were matai. Mm? They did not die a natural death. The disciples were killed by people. Why are you running? Stand your ground. Let destiny speak for you. For thousands shall fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right hand side. Don't worry about the budget. Worry about how to praise him. Paul and Silas decided to sing. When they were beaten and they had open sore. In the prison, they were they were facing sickness like tuberculosis. To have an open sore in a security place, like a maximum security jail, open sore. There were rats there. The place was stinking. There wasn't WC in those prisons. These days, the prisons are even nicer than people's houses. But the ancient prison was terrible. They had to go and make a loop, toilet in the corner, 
and then opposite the toilet they sing that's the God you are serving that's the God you are serving and the Bible said because they could praise God in difficulty God came down and did what he must do stop complaining this is our new year convention and you are facing the year with strength anything that took your strength away take it back Amen. our father did not promise us roses church the light do you eat honey every day your mouth will be sore if all that you can eat is candy toffee chocolates mm, cake chocolate cake chocolate your teeth will remove them life is not always sweet i'm preaching through gospel life is not always sweet but if your life has become bitter it does not tell you to pack your things and stop church you are going back in strength you are going back in confidence you can do church and your congregation can tell you we don't want to get out this is what apostle paul went through they told him do not come to jerusalem again we don't want you and Apostle Paul headed towards Greece. And the Bible said in Antioch, he preached the gospel. But I'm amazed that some of you have named your children Paul. When you don't know that they suffered rejection. What are you facing that God did not permit? What are you going through that God did not allow? Who is man that you will be bitter about? Who is man that you will be hating about? If God did not permit them, they couldn't have done what they did to you. Stand up, child of God. Lift up your shoulders. Lift up your face. And go back strong. Who failed you? And someone have never been failed before. I hate those who sit down and say, and I'm broken hearted, and I'm broken hearted. Oh, Father, you told me this was my husband, and he's no more my husband. Who told you that? Our God is a creator. When you lose one, he brings another. When a door closes, another door will open. The Bible said, any tree that bears fruit, he will prune it. And so if you did well yesterday, God is on your case. He said, breaking, melting, molding, and filling. Breaking, melting. You don't understand. You don't understand what I'm saying. When you are melted, I'm telling you, sometimes you wouldn't know how to read your Bible. Your position is that the heat of your trial will be so much that you do not know. You can't remember your name. But I'm telling you, it is God on the same. He's melting. Amen. He's melting. Amen. And he will be doing what? Molding. He will form you to his image. Nobody can do you any evil except God permitted it. That's why he's telling you love your enemies. Because it is his permission. That they may treat you anyhow. So that before they go and come back, you are somebody else. I prophesy to you, as you go back from this convention, our annual convention, I want you to remember those who have hurt you. The family members that have rejected you. And those who have loved you and those who are still mocking you i want you to go back knowing that there is a god who is in charge of the sun and the moon there is a god who is in charge of the day and the night and it doesn't matter how night your life is i see morning coming weeping may enjoy in the night but joy comes in the morning Weeping may enjoy in the night, but joy comes in the morning. The Lord did not promise us sweet, 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 sweet life. But he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Yeah, you may be in the valley, but you are not going to stay there. You may be in the valley, but you will come out. Hey, I see people gather against you.
but they shall not stand. Are you being mocked? Have they talked about your dressing? Did they talk about your lashes? Did they talk about your beauty? Did they say it is whatever? Don't care about what people say. Care about what God says. I see God coming into your life. I see the Spirit of God visiting you. Who hates you? Who disappointed you? Who did something that pays you? Drop it now. You are free. Take your strength back. 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 And I want you to shout, say, I receive it. Father, I've given your people the word. about how you help Nehemiah to the extent that Nehemiah could not remove his dress to sleep that he has to keep on wearing his dress and when he take it off somebody will stand there for him to quickly wash it one dress just build it father I present my people to you every minister of God under the sound of my voice receive your strength yeah. every congregation member receive your strength yeah. don't look at what people do on the Facebook some people come on Facebook just to intimidate you but care less about it think about the agenda of God the Bible said Nehemiah was building when Babylon was a superpower, when Greece was alive, when Romans say, when you come to Rome, do what, what Romans do, then he was in an obscurity, a place without name, a city that has no tree. Everything was bent down, but that's where Nehemiah stood to make sure God's mind will be fulfilled. Wherever you are standing at this time, I speak into your spirit that you shall build you shall build in the condition in which you are standing I prophesy strength to you go and prosper go and prosper go and prosper go and prosper don't you ever call yourself a failure call yourself a lesson call yourself a lesson don't name yourself a failure anything you try that failed, it is not called failure, it's called lesson. You learned something, you learned something, and so once you have learned something, you are better off tomorrow. I declare you blessed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And all shall say, Amen, 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 in Jesus' name, fire. If you are here and you want to rededicate your life to God, you have been so discouraged, you have said some things you shouldn't have said because of circumstances. The way you were expecting things to be, it did not go that way. And for that reason, you are so discouraged. I'm speaking to you. And I want you to lift up your right hand. And I want the pastors to quickly touch them. Please, listen carefully to me. Give me immortal, invisible, God, holy ones. If you are here and things did not go the way you think and you feel a little discouraged, I say the Lord will touch you now. Just five minutes ministration. Run quickly and come forward. Run quickly. about your family is a disappointment that can happen to you in the church is a disappointment that can happen to you in marriage is a disappointment that can happen to you in where you work run quickly run quickly run quickly run quickly strength is about to touch you strength is about to touch you if your pastor disappoints you your pastor is not God if your mother disappoints you, your mother is not God. 
If your father hurt you, your father, biological father, is not God. When your friend have betrayed you, they are just human beings. There is an agenda of Jehovah upon your life. Come on, pastors. I want you to touch them. And then to the pastors that need prayer, bow your head. Whilst they pray for them, I want to minister to you and I'll do that better when we go upstairs. My God, my God, my God. Hurt or disappointed. A touch. Gay parade. Once a year in everywhere, Bahamas does it three times a year. When the flag came, see idols on top of the flag. I'm telling you, if God does not find 10 people righteous in a place, there is shaking. So your appointment is not fanciful. It's an appointment from God. Please, from today, do not pray without mentioning prayer for your nation. Prayer for your city. Prayer for your leaders. Prayers for the government. And that's why you wear onnets. And it's on the shoulders. You see, the onnets is not on the chest. On the shoulders of Aaron. That is the meaning of your shirt. May the peace of God rest upon you. Now, if you are willing, say, I am willing that the Lord will use me as an intercessor for my nation. If you are willing, say, yes, I'm willing the Lord be my help. I did not preach a gospel to deceive you. Jesus said there will be persecutions. Jesus said you will be hated by men. Okay? Jesus said people will laugh at you. When you leave this place, your friends will mock you. <laughs> See, <laughs> they say they are pastors. Oh, when I was ordained as a pastor, somebody laughed and the person fell down. And that same person comes back begging me for friend requests. Mama, please, I'm here. Remember me. I say, I do remember you. You were the one who laughed till you fell down. Welcome home. Mama, can you lay hands on me so that I can preach the gospel? Wait till God finish what he's doing with you. You don't have to get angry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Trust in God. Now, I ask you for the last time. Are you willing to endure? Hardness as a soldier in God. Despite every situation you are facing. If it's so, lift up your hand and say, yes, I'm willing. The Lord God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be my help. Amen. Please sit down. We are going to wash your feet. And um, that's for my... We want to save time. So, I don't know, but I really want to save time. Mm? Who are the people serving here? Please remove your shoes. Are they aware they will wash their feet? Before we see wonderful socks and things. <laughs> Where is the towel? Okay, okay, so it's not formality, it's a written word, but to save time, and um, this is how we are going to do it. Give me a towel. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let you do that. Okay, Reverend, go there. Make a wipe and wear your socks at the count of 10. Pastor Matthew, thank you, our Arizona pastor. Please press that keyboard and let it keep. Just as I am without no, no, one plea. No, no, no. Is that it? No, no, no. Okay. I said take care of the camera. I declare you blessed. I declare you favored. Please, all of you help our media department. Help our media department. Don't relax about it. Everybody here is very important to God. And this is documentary. 
is very important. You keep it. And as we are doing it now, it's being marked in the book of life. Thank you. Wear your shoes. Wear your shoes. If we have clean your feet, wear your shoes. Now, this is in John. This is in John. The Bible says that Jesus washed the dust of the feet of his people. I want to give you the reason. Are you listening? Are you recording so they can play it back and listen? The dust of your feet. It comes as you do the work of God. You carry people's way they treated you. The word dust means what? Human character. The dust of your feet must be washed. The things that human beings have done to you must be washed away. May your heart be free from today. Please don't go back and talk about anything people did to you. God has washed it away. Don't remember the pain. Do you hear me? You are new. You are new. So the Bible said Jesus himself washed the feet of his disciples so that they will be comforted. Anything that is flesh, may it be removed in your life. In the name of Jesus. Please kneel down. We are going to pour oil upon you and we will dress you. Yes, I know daddy is very tired, but the Lord is your strength. Daddy, we want to help out. Ah, someone said I should do it for you. Okay, daddy, sit down. Please give daddy water to drink. And then daddy can be gone if he wants to rest. He's been working since morning. Can you kneel down so that we do the laying of hands very quickly? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands upon you and I declare that you will never be the same. Lift up your hands when I lay hands upon you. Get ready, the Spirit of God is coming upon you. I'm only representing the Father. He has something to do with life. I lay hands for you to receive wisdom. To receive grace Amen. and to complete your assignment. You will hear from God. You will see from God. You will discern. Speak the gospel and your hands are blessed. And your feet is blessed. Wherever you go, the iron shoes of the spirit will be on your feet. You will crush the head of the serpent. I lay hands on you as you are willing. So God is willing to assist you. By this laying of hands, I impart wisdom, understanding, the Holy Spirit to fill you. Receive utterance. See, hear, discern, and do what pleases the Lord. Of course, your hands are touched, and so whoever you lay hands on to heal shall be healed. I lay hands upon you that from today, your life will never be as the same. Your eyes will see, your ears will hear, your father will speak to you. You shall descend from the spirit. You will speak the gospel. Your hands shall heal. I command you bless in the name of Jesus Christ. And your feet shall speak. And touch and crush the enemy. I lay hands upon you for wisdom and the seven spirit of the Lord. I declare your ears shall hear. Your eyes shall see. Your nose will smell and discern. Your mouth will speak. Your hands will heal. Sickness will never leave in your body anymore. They are gone. I lay hands upon you as a minister of God to hear, to see, to discern, to speak. The Bible said in ordination and the, and the man of God is said that Moses touched the tongues of the one that is to be ordained so that they can have authority 
I declare as it's written in the Bible, I release authority. The power you have, but authority you receive by touching your thumb. And I prophesy over you that you will never be the same. You standing and you will never fall. You will rise and your voice shall go to nations. I prophesy over you that this is beginning of greatness. That you will see the glory of God. You are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus mighty name. And everyone please help me say amen. As you stand up we want to put under your throat the anointing of truth. The anointing of truth is the clerical. And the color is white because truth is plain. Truth is white and it stands for righteousness. May I have the card for the first person very quickly? Very quickly. Where are your clergy, your, your clerical? Okay, Reverend Michael, when I'm here, you help me with them. This is for you. I wear the spirit of truth upon you. And out of your throat shall come truth. As I wear you this, you shall stand for righteousness. You will face the truth and you will deal with anything that is not true. I declare you a pastor in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you are a minister, be praying in the spirit for them. You all know what it takes to be here. You know if they don't know what is ahead, they will depend on your prayers. This uniform is not for ministers, it's for pastors. Ministers don't wear uniform. It's for pastors. I pray that the Pentecostal church will learn well. This is to say that everything that will come from your throats out will be righteous. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Out of your throat shall come truth. And I declare the honor of the Lord who continue to rest upon you. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. There is a new day that has come upon your life. Truth come upon you. Truth come upon you. I wear you the garment of truth in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit and I declare that truth shall come from you this work is a work of truth and therefore from hence you continue to speak truth in the name of Jesus I wear for you the spirit of truth out of your mouth shall come righteousness what we are doing here is in Malachi in the book of Malachi he said and the priest shall speak the truth and righteousness shall be their portion we call you with this righteousness and with this code of truth in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen now as you stand here say after me oh Lord your word has said I should carry my cross and follow you. So I will wear the symbol of the cross. And any time I look at it, I will not complain. I will bear my body. And you said, by the cross, I am qualified to be a child of God. Therefore, from today, I joyfully and boldly wear my cross before God the Father, before God the Son, and before God the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you're going to wear your own cross. Please, the cross I can't wear for you. I'm carrying my own. You see how heavy it is. Carrying your own. Jesus carried his own cross. And so you're going to wear your own cross. Be proud of your suffering. It is said that we suffer for Christ. Anything you are suffering about, because Jesus has chosen you, will not be put to shame. Put on your cross with joy. 
This is a cross and an anchor. And that is powerful. They say the anchor is in God. Now Jesus says that take up my yoke and follow me. Take up my yoke. Praise the Lord. Listen. He did not say take my cross. He said take your cross. But as for the yoke, it's from God. What is the yoke of God? Or of, 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 of Christ? The yoke of Christ is that the things that God is betting about. It is the will of God that you bear the burden of God. The burden of God is that you will continue to preach the gospel. The Lord is anxiously looking at you to bear his burden. Now say after me, I am willing to bear the yoke of Christ. So this is called the pulpit stone, is the yoke. It's a sign, it's a symbol. These things are spiritual garments. And they are in the Bible. It is representing the yoke. Are you willing to bear the yoke? You see the yoke I'm carrying. I cannot even say I won't go to church. Huh? I was running fever. I couldn't even think about it. I better look for pepper soup and ginger and get up and come and preach. Do you know how I was feeling two days ago? You have no idea. The congregation will call you and tell you, Mommy, are they sick? By you, rain or shine, you must bear the bed. Therefore, I strengthen you to bear the burden of the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I strengthen you to bear the burden of the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. I strengthen you to bear the burden of the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I Strengthen you that you both will bear the burden of the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. This one, they are twins, they do things together. I declare that the two of you will bear the burden of the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And everybody shall say, Amen. 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 Jesus say. We want to welcome our daddy to give them the certificate. Then we can quickly take a shot with them. Thank you. Oh, okay. You were giving me signal. Did not tell me. Okay. Now. Now, it is written in the Bible. Hallelujah. In Haggai 2.23. The, the Bible said, I will wear you a signet so that you can sign my signature. Yeah? I will wear you what? A signet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every pastor has divine rights and authority to make a decree. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You hear? Are you listening? And so what you are going to do now is that you are taking the decree. And in the ancient days, signatures were not done with pens. They were done with rings. And so you are receiving your signet. That's the name. The signet of authority. I wear you the signet of authority in your right finger. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. I wear you the signet of authority in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I wear you the signet of authority in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I wear you the signet of authority in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Come on, clap for them. Clap for them. Okay, receive your certificate one by one as we stand here and take your photograph so we can do. Bless you. Amen. Daddy, just stand. They will come and receive. Daddy, come. No walking for daddy. No. Daddy, stand here. If you hear your name, come and receive your certificate.
We have newly ordained Pastor Jacinto Bolognese. Welcome you to the fivefold ministry. If the evangelists are around, stand on the standby. Next on the list is we have Camela Rich. Camela. I welcome you to the fivefold ministry, as it is written in the Bible. God bless you. Camela Rich, you come for your certificate. Please, minister, slam yourself up so when they are shaking, it will be easier. Thank you. Thank Pastor Juliana, get ready. What's up? Yeah. You stand here and give them right now. Apostles. Yeah, I'm guilty. Nothing like you. Pastor Juliana, as someone. Welcome to the five Okay, so you do one, two, three, and I do the Pastor Bondi, you better get ready for your team. Welcome them to the five Shake their hands well. Maybe they never know they will suffer. Let them shake. Welcome, Pastor Bondi Elizabeth. When they insult you, don't turn. Ephraim, welcome you. Smile. Welcome. The last but not the least, we have Pastor Francis Ogwemedia. Come on, you heard the name Pastor Francis. You want to clap for that. Pastor Julie, I welcome you to the fivefold ministry. And the Lord is your strength. I welcome you to the fivefold ministry. I'm the last one. Apostles, and when we finish, then we take with them. Uh, 